Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the best settings that I use for vlogging on my Canon G7X Mark II. I love this camera as you guys may already know. I've been using this camera since November 2020, so for a few months now. Um, I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed by all the settings because when I first got this camera, I did not know how to use it. I was so scared. I got a bit frustrated because I was like, how, how am I gonna learn how to use this? I watched loads and loads of YouTube videos on this camera. As you know, this is like one of the most popular vlogging cameras. So this camera is all over YouTube. I was watching a lot of videos, learned how to use the camera and figured out the best settings for myself when I'm doing vlogging. A few days ago, I did my first proper vlog using this camera. If you guys haven't checked out that video, you guys can go over to my channel to check that out. Filming this vlog was really, really fun. I was able to get my kids involved and as the camera was like on the best settings, for me, I think the camera um, produced a really good vlog for myself. I really do like the vlog and um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the results that the camera gave me that day. I just wanna give you guys some tips and tricks and show you guys the settings that are best for me personally. So the settings that I use on the Canon G7X Mark II for when I'm doing my vlogs. Don't be overwhelmed by the settings on this camera. It does take some time to get used to, but once you get used to it, you'll be using the camera for vlogging. Like you'd be vlogging all the time. You've got nothing to worry about. You're gonna absolutely love vlogging on this camera. If there's anything else that you'd like me to help you with, uh, maybe you could leave a comment down below and I could do another video for you guys sometime soon to show you maybe how to take pictures on the camera and stuff like that. Just leave a comment below and I will do that for you. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do to set yourself up for vlogging on this camera is to set up your face ID. The Canon G7 X has face ID, so this is perfect for when vlogging. All you need to do is register your face on the camera and the camera is going to be able to recognize you all the time. That's perfect for vlogging. The camera is gonna track your face. So when your face is inside the camera on face ID, you can like set up different angles and stuff like that. So um, it recognizes your entire face. Once you do that, when vlogging, the camera is gonna definitely 100% recognize you. So you're always going to be in focus. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on menu. On option number two in the red, you click on face ID settings. Face ID settings is off, so you're gonna to wanna to click it on and put it on. The next thing you can do is add to registry. So this will allow you to add your face to the registry. So you can set different angles of your face on the camera so the camera can recognize you more. When you flip up the screen, you'll be able to take photos of yourself and this will register your face to the camera settings. After setting up your face ID, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is put your camera into movie mode. Once you're in video mode, you're gonna wanna put the camera into manual mode. So to put your camera into movie mode, you're gonna wanna click on the camcorder and change it from standard and put it into manual mode. When your camera's in manual mode, you're gonna be able to control things like your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. The Canon G7X is amazing. It has an aperture of 1.8, so that allows a shallow depth of field. So that's amazing for when you want that blurred background. I do generally have my f-stop on 1.8. This is because I prefer to have that blurred background effect. So if that's something you like, then keep it on f-stop 1.8. You can put it up to f-stop 11, but I do recommend having it on f-stop 1.8. Having a high ISO is good for low light situations. The only thing with that is that it's gonna make your footage a little bit more grainy. So if you can, you can maybe bring in some lights into your settings, like maybe a lamp or anything that can bring more light. So um, you don't need to turn your ISO up as much as you may think you need it to go up. So um, yeah, if you do that, it's gonna take away some of the grain that you might find in your footage. ISO determines how much light you're gonna let into the lens. It is a good idea to sometimes keep it on auto. The camera will auto adjust the light settings for you. If you're in a low light situation, it would be a good idea to turn up your ISO, but that can also give you more grainy footage. So you can um, maybe bring in some alternative lights if you need to. If you're struggling with the ISO, you can keep it on auto. 
Generally, I keep my frame rate on 24 frames per second. That's unless I would like to do some slow motion in some of my footage. So if I know that there's a clip that I would like to slow down later on in post-production, I'd put my frame rate to 60 frames per second and that would give me the nice slow motion look that I'm looking for. But generally, I'll keep it on 24 frames per second. If you don't know too much about frames per second, I'm going to give you an example now. 24 frames per second, this is the standard for movies and TV shows and it was determined to be the minimum speed needed to capture videos while still maintaining realistic motion. To change it to 24 frames per second, click on the Q button and change it to FHD 23.98, that's as close to 24 frames per second. The rule for shut speed is to double your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 24 frames per second, then you're gonna wanna put your shutter speed to 50. The shutter speed's the icon next to F1.8, so you're gonna wanna click on that and change it to one slash 50, which is just before one slash 60, so that's gonna be double your frame rate. When I'm doing my vlogs, I like to keep my settings in raw. This allows me to do any adjustments in post-production. I can color grain my edits and just do whatever edits that I need to do and make any adjustments that I need to make. To change your settings to raw, you're gonna wanna click on the Q button and it's gonna be the icon underneath AF. And then the first icon there would be raw. Click on raw to change that to the raw setting so you will be able to make adjustments in post-production. I'm just gonna quickly show you some other settings. So when I click the Q button, I can click on ND filter. Generally in the daytime, if it's really sunny, I turn the ND filter on and I have the ND filter off when I'm indoors. The ND filter acts as sunglasses, so if it's really sunny, it's gonna adjust the camera settings so you can see yourself better in the camera. So what I'm doing now is I'm deciding whether I want to keep it on tracking mode or if I wanna put it on one point autofocus. So if you want the camera to track you that's perfect for when you're doing vlogging so you can keep it on this setting now what I'm doing is I am going to change the auto white balance I don't always play around with this you can just leave it on auto white balance or depending on the scenario you can play around with these settings if you're in a shady spot you can put it on shady if it's cloudy outside you can put it on cloudy and as you can see there's lots of different settings so you can play about with that if you don't want to play about with that you can keep it on auto we also have picture styles here so for vlogging I do recommend keeping it on portrait mode but it's totally up to you you can decide what kind of settings work for you we have neutral and we have fine detail there's so many different settings on this camera to play about with also at the bottom here where it says ring function you can press on that to adjust things like sharpness and contrast for your pictures and video so you can play around with that on the right hand corner you see there are numbers there i generally have my settings on these numbers so if you like my settings you can try it The next setting is going to auto correct your image like brightness and contrast so you can play around with that and leave it on standard or low or you can turn it off i generally keep it on the highest setting so i allow the camera to make the most adjustments as possible if you guys are considering getting this camera, I'd say go for it. You're not gonna regret it. This camera has so many amazing features. If you need to do any more research, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that will tell you everything that you need to know. You guys can check out my last video um, showing you guys a little issue that I was having with the camera, which is the camera's autofocus. It's not a big deal. It's just that when I don't put the camera on autofocus lock, sometimes it makes an annoying clicking sound, but that's a quick fix. And it's like a, literally a quick fix that you can fix in seconds. So if you guys want to check that out, you guys can check that out in my other video. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video today. I hope you guys have a bit more clarity and feel a little bit more confident using this camera now. So um, if you stick with these settings that I've showed you, you're basically going to be okay. Like you have nothing to worry about 
about. As I said, if you have any questions, feel free to message me down below. You can leave a comment and I will get back to you with any answers that you need to um, have answered. Vlogging on this camera in low light situations, you're not gonna have a problem. You just need to tweak little things here and there, like maybe your ISO and things like that. So um, yeah, there's nothing to worry about. What I'd say is play around with the camera, get to know it a bit better and you guys will figure it out. It's really not that difficult. It's a very basic, straightforward camera. I know the settings like can overwhelm you and make you feel as if it's a complicated camera, but it really isn't complicated. So just enjoy the camera and have fun with it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more content and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care, bye.